In this video, I'm gonna show you how to really quickly enhance and colorize older black and white photos. I'm gonna be using Photoshop version 2023 in this tutorial, so let's go ahead and get started. So I have this photo here, and I took this of my friend Kim while I was in high school. And you can see that it was a photo that I processed by myself in the dark room. So there's a lot of scratches and a lot of little dust specks all over it. Now, before I jump into the neural filters, which is what we're going to be using to actually create this effect, I wanna make sure that my image mode is set to RGB color. Oftentimes when you get black and white photos scanned, sometimes they'll come back as grayscale, and it's not a big deal because you can just really quickly change that setting in Photoshop. Then I'm gonna to go to Filter, and then down to Neural Filters. Over here on the right in this All Filters list, you'll see a whole bunch of different options. For this video, I'm gonna be focusing on Colorize and Photo Restoration. If you see that little download icon next to the filter, click it and it will download it to your version of Photoshop. So I'm gonna start out by toggling the photo restoration box. That will usually take a few moments for it to process everything and then you'll see those effects there in that preview window. Over on the right, you have the adjustments you can work with. You'll see photo enhancement, enhanced face, and scratch reduction. I'm actually gonna take that scratch reduction and move it almost all the way to the right there because I see a lot of dust specks and scratches in this photo. I'm also going to reduce the enhanced face a little bit because I feel like it's smoothing it out a little too much. And let's also take a look at these adjustments in this dropdown. If you notice that you have a little bit of too much grain or noise, you can play around with this slider. Uh, the color noise reduction isn't going to apply here right now because there's no color noise because there's no color. And then if your image has a halftone effect, which is kind of all those little dots, and, and sometimes you'll see that in scanned uh, print photographs, you can kind of play around with that to remove it. And then if you see any JPEG artifacts, you can use that. But I don't need any of those adjustments here. So I'm just gonna jump right over to that colorize box. I'm going to click to toggle that, and it automatically creates a beautiful colorizing effect in this image. Now, I don't think I need to really make too many changes to this, um, but I am going to do a little bit because I notice over here, her hair is just a little pinkish or reddish. So I'm gonna to try to bring it back to kind of that blonde color that it should be. So you'll see that auto color image is selected here, but if you want to manually color your photo, just simply click in the area over this little black and white preview on the right, and then you can choose a color just by selecting it from this dropdown. Then don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time you choose something, you can always go back and change it. So I'll click OK, and I just wanna see what that looks like. Now that was pretty intense, so I'm gonna take that strength slider and move it to the left. And that looks like it kind of evened it out a little bit. So I have that color and that strength selected. I'm going to click in another area of my photo to use that same coloring in her hair. And this looks great. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom and take a look at my options here. If you click Output, then you have some options here that you can use. Uh, current layer will just overwrite and just replace the current layer. You may not want to do that because this could be your only copy of this photo. So new layer is a good option to work with. Um, you can also choose Smart Filter. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that and then click OK. What that smart filter option did was it automatically converted that layer to a smart object and it applied the effect as a smart filter. So let's go ahead and take a look to see how that works and how you can re-edit those effects. So if you look down here in the layers panel, I have that layer that I've edited and it has the neural filters effects. If I wanted to go back and make any adjustments to any of those filters, all I need to do is just double click the name of that filter and it will reopen the original inside of those neural filters. So I could make adjustments to any of those filters that I applied, or I could add new ones. I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel because I don't need to make any changes, but I did want to show you that as an option. Let's take a look at this technique with another photograph. This is a photograph of my parents, and I'd like to colorize this image. First, I'm gonna to check to make sure that my mode is set to RGB, and it looks like it is, so I'm good to go there. Then I'm gonna to go to Filter, Neural Filters. For this image, I primarily just want to colorize it, so I'll go to that Colorize option and click Colorize. Photoshop did a pretty good job to start out, but I do see some areas that need some adjustment. 
the coat area right here looks like it needs to kind of have that reddish color removed from it. So I'm going to go over to that black and white area and click, and I'm just going to find a blue that's kind of similar to that existing blue in his coat, and then click OK. And that did a really good job. If that color was a little bit off, then I could just simply click around the image and maybe add that color to the rest of the coat. It looks like I need a tiny bit here in the lower left. And now I'm going to continue on to the pants area because it looks like some of that reddish coloring is kind of, or that decoloring is in that area too. So I'm going to click over the pants and then I'm going to click that color swatch and change it to something a little bit darker, a little bit more of a darker blue. And I'll click a few more spots over the pants there. And then I'll do one on his leg. And it looks like the hand here has kind of been uh, kind of turned into a little bit of a gray color. So I'm going to see if I can fix that. I'm going to click the hand. And then I'm going to click that color swatch. And I need to find kind of a, a skin tone color. So I'll go down to like a brown color and then find something that's a little bit more tan. And then click OK and see if that helps. And that did a pretty good job. Now I can take that strength slider and increase it to try to add a little bit more saturation to that area. Now if I scroll down, there are some more options that you can work with when using the Colorize filter. These are going to be overall image adjustments, so you can either apply these image adjustments here or you can use adjustment layers in the Layers panel. For example, I may want to add some saturation to the coloring, so I'll increase that saturation slider, and I think that enhanced it nicely. If you need to do any color correction, you can play around with these other sliders. There's a color artifact reduction, noise reduction, and at the top here, there's also some profiles that you can use. So some of these are going to just give a different kind of unique effect to the photo that will kind of apply alongside that colorization effect. So this looks great. I'm gonna change my output to Smart Filter once again, and then click OK. Now you have the tools you need to go into your collection of black and white photos and start colorizing and enhancing them. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please click that like button and please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this down the road. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.